What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new GameSir G7 wired controller for the Xbox and PC. So this is officially licensed by Microsoft and it's fully customizable using their new app which is available on the Xbox or even on PC. So we can go through, map the buttons, we can change the dead zones of the analog sticks and the triggers here. And this actually has a few extra interesting features built in. Now obviously this is going to work for Xbox or PC, but you know if you don't mind using a wired controller with your Android device, you can plug this in and it will be detected as an Xbox controller. And since we're wired, we don't have to worry about any kind of Bluetooth latency or even 2.4 gigahertz latency. I'm actually glad to see GameSir come to the market with an officially licensed Xbox controller that works on PC. Now they've got an officially licensed mobile controller that'll work with your Android device and it's great. It's known as the GameSir X2. But uh, like I mentioned, I do love these wired controllers given the fact that we don't have any kind of latency whatsoever. And these analog sticks actually feel great. We've got some extra mappable buttons around back here. They also include a 3 meter detachable USB cable. It's actually high quality, it's wrapped in fabric. But uh, one of the coolest things that actually comes with the G7 is an extra faceplate here and it's paint friendly so you can actually customize your controller. And in the instructions they state that using a paint marker might be the best way to go but you could always use this, you know, plain Jane White if you want to. It actually attaches to the controller using magnets and we'll pull the black one off in a second and take a look at that. But I thought this was a cool little feature and especially if you're into customizing your devices. And that's not all the G7 has going for it. This actually utilizes hall sensors in the trigger. So we've got hall sensor based analog triggers here. They're fully customizable. And they've also added vibration motors to both of the triggers. So in total, we've got four rumble motors in this controller. And I gotta say, once you turn the intensity up, it actually makes for a really cool experience, especially with uh, FPS games and my favorite racing games. Something like Forza Horizon 5 really does benefit from this. Makes it a whole different experience when you have that rumble in the trigger for the gas and the brake. We've also got a non-slip texture around back and they've also added it to the triggers and the bumpers. This also supports a microphone, so we've got that 3.5 millimeter audio jack down here and we've also got our mute button right there, easy to get to. And they've also set it up so we do have some hotkeys built into the directional pad, so all we need to do is hold that hotkey button and we can swap it directly from there. So the very first thing I noticed when pulling this out of the box is the D-pad is not using a conductive pad. It's actually using dome switches underneath. So if you're not into those, then you know that might be a bit disappointing. And another thing to mention here is we don't have conductive pads under the A, B, X, and Y buttons. And this also isn't a traditional micro switch. This is a leaf spring micro switch. And I personally haven't seen this in any other controller on the market yet. Uh, I definitely had to get used to it but it seems to work really well with the way they've got this set up. Swapping out the face plates is really easy. There's six magnets underneath it. And I mean, you could also customize the black one if you want to, but this is a paint friendly white one that they send with you. And they do mention in the instructions to use a paint pen, but you could spray this if you want to. You could hydro dip it. It's really up to you. I personally think it looks good in the white form factor here, but uh, I might do a little bit of customization later on down the road. And the overall feel of the controller is great. It's definitely coming in a lot lighter than a stock Xbox controller, given that we don't have any way to put batteries in this unit. I mean, it's going to work over a wired connection, so you might have to get used to having such a light controller. But for the past couple days, I've actually been using this on my Xbox Series S, my Series X, and my PC. I've gotten used to using it, and it works out really well. Now initially, the only thing we need to do is plug this into the Xbox or PC. It's automatically going to be detected and we can use it as an Xbox controller. So we could start playing our games right now the way it is. Or you could download their dedicated GameSir Nexus app so we can fully customize the buttons on the controller. Just move in a bit closer here. We've got our default profile and we've got three extra profiles that we can set directly from the app. Now, as soon as you go in here, we can customize the button layout. We can swap this out to anything on screen right now, and any button on here is mappable. But I'd say the main thing that a lot of people are going to be mapping are the rear buttons, the extra buttons that they've placed on the back of the controller. So uh, from here, we can actually set this up as kind of a hair trigger, and that's what I would go with. Map the left one to my left trigger, right one to my right trigger, but you know, it's up to you. It's fully customizable. Next, from within the app, we can head over to sticks, and from here we can change the dead zones on the sticks, and I really do wish they were using hall sensors here, but uh, I mean, it does work like it is. 
So checking out the left analog stick, I can turn this down to 75%, change that dead zone if I want to. My right one is still at 100, and we've got an on-screen visualization. We can also set the initial value if you want to have a little bit of input, you know, just starting out, you can always go with that. But this is great if you want to customize your sticks. Moving over to our trigger section, kind of the same thing here. We can set the initial value and the dead zone. And these are really accurate. They're using those hall sensors, great for racing games. They've even got a hair trigger section. So we turn this on and no matter what kind of input we put in here, it's gonna go to 100%, but I think that's what these back buttons should be for. But if you wanted to do hair trigger with those, all you gotta do is enable it from here. You can do it individually from left to right. And the final thing we've got here is our vibration section. So we've got four motors built in. We've got one in each trigger which is really awesome for racing games. I gotta say it again, this has made a world of difference when I'm playing something like Forza Horizon 5. And we've also got our traditional motors in the bottom of the handles. And we can adjust each side individually or we could sync them up. And once we go up to five, I mean, it really shakes this thing out, but it adds some extra haptics that are, I think, really needed for some games. And you know, this is version 1.0 of the app. They might add more stuff down the road, but it's available on the Xbox or even on PC. So you can download it directly on your PC and do the same exact thing there. So the first thing I wanted to show off were these analog triggers. Here's Forza Horizon 5. And I mean, I can take this up to 1000 RPM, 2000, 3000, basically set up launch control here. And it is very accurate. I'm really digging these triggers. Great for precise control over the gas and brake in a game like this, and it really helps out with drifting. Now, if you don't use, you know, a steering wheel itself and you just want to use a controller, then this would definitely help you out if you like that extra control. Next thing I wanted to test out here was the D-pad. Like I mentioned, this is using dome micro switches. There's no conductive pads, and it would have been really nice to have a conductive pad under this. This is something you could get used to, but uh, you know, I'd much rather have a conductive pad, especially when it comes to fighting games. As you can see, I can pull off these special moves in something like Street Fighter V. And by the way, I've got this connected to my gaming PC now. I've downloaded their app from there. Looks exactly the same as the one on Xbox, and we can do all the same stuff right now. And yeah, I mean, these dome switches work, something you can get used to it. And you know, a lot of the button feel, analog, trigger feel really comes down to personal preference. I would much rather see a controller like this with a conductive pad behind the D-pad, but some people do like these dome switches. And like I mentioned, you can definitely get used to them. Another thing I've been playing a lot with this controller are first person shooters. Here's Doom Eternal. Got some really good accuracy, even though we're not using hull sensor joysticks. These Alps joysticks have been around for a long time, and you know, if you use an Xbox controller, you know exactly how they feel. These are actually very nice. So overall, the GameSir G7 isn't a bad wired controller for your Xbox or your PC. Now, uh, the buttons might take a little bit of getting used to, but they work, and they work very well. One thing that I would love to see changed is just that D-pad. I'm not a fan of these dome switches, but some people are, and that would work out really well for you. I love the haptics here. I'm glad to see that they added those vibration motors to the triggers. And if you've never used like a PS5 controller, then uh, you might not know exactly what I'm talking about. But if you have, then you know it's kind of a satisfying experience when we have those haptics directly in the triggers. And right now on Amazon, it's listed for $38. Plus there's a 5% coupon bringing it down to around 36 and it's well worth that price. I wouldn't spend 50 on it, but if you can get it right there under 40, then yeah, this would be well worth picking up for your Xbox or even your PC. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. If you want to see this working on any other hardware, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. If you're interested in learning more, maybe picking one up. I'll leave a couple links in the description, but like always, Thanks for watching.